Okay, quick uh, fly through on Pugbot um, and how the build goes. So, <coughs> within Pugbot, um, it uses the standard speeder drivers or death racer drivers that drives or whatever you want to call. So, I'll start off on the drives. Um, it's configured for a 30, Polo Lou 37mm uh, motor with a gearbox. Um, the instructions for the drive builds are on any of the speeder builds um, and also the kind of death racer drive flues so there's lots of assembly instructions for for these um, what you have on the inside of the drives is um, these little pieces here which effectively are the um, so I can get the drive show you a little bit more in detail so you've got an inner track spacer so one of the differences with Pugbot is that the body actually tilts back and forth. So if you look inside the body, um, you've actually got a tipping mechanism, which I'll just move this tray so you can see how it works. But effectively what you've got is you've got a small servo, where you've got a servo there, which is a standard 9 I think the 996 or 966 are uh, digital servos uh, <coughs> a flexible connector to this rod this rod pulls this back and forth and so what it actually does is it will tip when it's running it'll tip the main body forward and back about 10 degrees so I'm just kind of show you what 10 degrees looks like so you get kind of an idea of the uh, of the angle so if I go like from the front, so when he's driving forward, he'll tip around about like that, and then when he's driving backwards, he can tip around about ten degrees, which is like that. So it's not a lot of movement, uh, but what it does do is, is create <coughs> a bit of fun animation when when you're rolling him around. Um, the way the tipping mechanism works is you've got the you've got the standard two six millimeter bars that go through there the length of those six millimeter bars is um, 280 millimeters so 280 millimeter bar goes through you've got two 280 millimeter bars that go right the way through they'll go through here um, and are clamped in place with these things here and what it does is basically tip tip the pug box so, what that means on the, as I was going through on the drives, is we've got these inner spacers that fit. In the inner spacers, you've got a hole here. That hole is designed to take the cable from the motors through into the body. And that's effectively the pivot point. There's nothing that goes through there other than cables, but it just stops the cables from getting snagged or anything when they're uh, when it's tipping. And then you've got these two holes here, which is for your 6mm bars. So basically you assemble the standard, standard drives these drives have the little top uh, co cover plates and they clamp on the drives and then uh, it allows it to tilt so these inner plates bolt on here and here onto the main drives um, and then what you've got is you've got these little wing mechanisms so basically what happens is this is a parallelogram Basically, there's a, there's, a, there's a lever here that attaches to a point on this wing here, and then you've got a pivot point here. So, let me just kind of show you how that works. So, if you can imagine this body tips forward 10 mil or back 10 mil, these tracks remain in place. So, what it does do is it kind of flaps the wing up and down a little bit as it tilts. So, the wing, the wing, even though the body's tilted, the wing will remain parallel to the actual drive system so it just gives it a bit of more animation um, <coughs> when you're moving it back and forth and so the assembly for the tracks these these two just go on with two m3 bolts um, let's see and on that lower one just to give you an idea of size that lower one is about 10 mil um, and the upper one uh, you can put another 10 mil one in there to hold that in and effectively what happens then is he tilts back and forth this this, this flaps um, the way that the, these wings assemble is you've got you've effectively got three parts to to the wing 
you've got the main wing, you've got a little space so it fits onto there and then you've got this inner plate. So basically you put this inner plate in and you put a bolt right the way through to the wing and so it gives it a bit of a pivot point um, just on the shoulders. So that's how you, um, so follow the instructions to assemble a drive. These fit on the inside, cables route through this hole and then go in through this hole into the body. Um, and then you've got the wing, the wings that, that tip. Body itself is a single print, um, no supports as usual. <coughs> it's got printed Lazy Susan, and these th this top bit here is to hold the Lazy Susan. Uh, you've got one greeble at the front, which is a front grill, and on the inside of there you can fit uh, a speaker in there. So if you do want any sound effects or whatever, and then on the inside, this is where the tilt mechanism sits or the tip mechanism sits um, basically if I just uh, hide the main body for the time being I'll show you how the tilt mechanism works so the tilt mechanism prints um, you've got two bearings these are um, these are 24 mil on the outer diameter and I think the 15 mil on the inner uh, yeah 15 so they're 15 by 24 by 7 there we go 5 5 yeah so 15 mil on the inside 24 mil on the outside and 5 millimeters deep um, and what they do is one of those fits on either side of the base um, then what you've got is you've got the arms um, the A and B which slots into there <coughs> and then you've got the lower frame um, which bolts if I just remove the upper frame it bolts onto those you can see where it bolts onto those two arms so basically simple assembly of the lower frame you bolt these two arms onto it with the holes and then <coughs> they go in through the bearing and that gives you your basic movement then what you then do is put the upper frame on top and again you've got four bolt holes these clamp the M6 bar uh, to the main mechanism and then it's got a pivot so where, where those bearings are it gives you this pivot and then there's this servo tilt arm which sits on top a couple of screws either side again M3 screws just to hold that on and then effectively what happens is when this servo goes back and forth a little tiny bit it actually tilts the whole body by 10 degrees back and forth um, and this little servo horn here is printed in flex and then there's a servo bracket that holds that in once you've completed that assembly the, the, way, the way you assemble it basically is you complete all the assembly but leave the upper frame off um, you can put the servo tilt arm connected to the upper frame but what you do is leave that off <coughs> so you'll probably have something that looks like that or this will be not connected drop that into the base of the main body and then you've got four screws on the bottom that hold that plate in place fifth screw doesn't do anything by the way I just put it in there as, as potentially an extra one but I didn't need it in the end <coughs> so that's your once you once basically once you've got that in place and you've got the cables out, what your next bit that you do is you slot slide the um, this one of the assemblies on, slide it across with the bars uh, across and with the wing on, and then what you do is attach the other one and clamp it down either side, um, and then what you can do then is drop the upper frame and the servo tilt arm just on top of it and then put your four bolts in so it clamps it all together once you've done that you've pretty much assembled the whole of the tilt mechanism um, and then there's a tray that bolts on top of the tilt mechanism through these little bolts these three bolt holes here and it actually rests on these two side pieces here um, <coughs> it has got lots and lots of little holes in there for cable ties so you can run cable ties etc so effectively that's your main tilt mechanism little tray the reason I put the tray in is that um, if we're putting batteries in there or you're putting speed controllers and all of that, that kind of stuff you can put them in that tray or you can put them in the sides here with space 
or you can put them at the front here but you might might also have a speaker so i just wanted to kind of put it so it didn't actually interfere with the main tip mechanism so it gives you a bit more uh, a few spaces to be able to fit some of the electronics that you need so that assembles like that um, it's got a printed 3d lazy susan very similar to some of the other ones that, that i've done which uses five millimeter um, bearings um, and effectively if I just take it show you a little bit of a cross section of the whoops uh, if I can find a custom way to grab a cross section let's just take that off um, yeah there we go Right, let's look at that cross section. Might just do that again, actually. Inspect uh, section analysis. There we go. Right, there we go. Yep, so you can see the Lazy Susan basically has 5mm balls that run around that race. So effectively, print them out, sand it, to, similar to the other Lazy Susans that we've done. Once you've done that, you can get as many balls into the race as you can do. Um, and then there's a little plug on this side here uh, that will let you push through some more lazy susans you might want to just clean that uh, hole out with a bit of a file just so that uh, the lazy susan the balls go in and out smoothly um, if they don't if you ever need to disassemble it it's a nightmare to get the uh, the balls out so uh, I'd, tr I'd make sure that the balls do move in and out fairly smooth a little bit of lubricant white grease or whatever and that's effectively your lazy susan assembly um, and then your lazy susan assembly uh, so if we uh, look at lazy susan assembly let's just, just remove this other box so you can kind of see how it attaches so the lazy susan assembly attaches to in four points one two three four so that's the these points here on this body your lazy susan basically just bolts onto there um, you've got one of the little yellow hobby motors here um, which effectively has got a drive gear and then that's what actually drives the, the upper susan so the upper susan will spin there's a hole in the middle there for a um, slip ring so you can run power cables up there and then you can put one, two, three, four, five. So you can put five magnets into there, which are the 10 millimeter diameter by five millimeter deep, and they just glue in with epoxy, which holds the head on. Um, so if I just bring the dome in, I'll show you what the uh, what, what I mean by the dome. So, so I'll look now. Uh, Susan, like that. yeah. <coughs> so on the underside of the dome what you've got is you've got the equivalent for your um, magnets and then you've also got some locating pins which are five millimeters in diameter so what that means is that they will just uh, it'll, it'll, the dome attaches to the lazy susan with magnets but what you can also do then is is put some pins in there um, the little five millimeter pins which uh, I use uh, five millimeter grub screws, but you can use anything really um, that's five millimeter bar or whatever that's in diameter. Uh, and all you do is just cut that down and glue them into place. So you've got some little pins and you've got some magnets that hold the dome on correctly. Um, so it's, it's a fairly it's a fairly simple build, and if you build build a few of the smaller ones before, you'll kind of be, be used to how it all assembles. And I'll just quickly go through the. Um, the the upper part as well so this is the dome of the the, uh, the main head of the pug um, <coughs> this takes the some little SG90 servos so you've got a couple of SG90 servos that will fit either side onto those brackets there um, and what what they do is that they have got um, the servo horn and then with a little paper clip or a bit of wire you connect it to this outer part here so let me just remove the dome I'll show you how the 
uh, ears assemble. So the way the way the ears basically work is <coughs> you've got a pin that can go through there, which is about two millimeters. So you, the easiest thing to do, and what where what these were designed for, is for some standard printer filament. So you push some printer filament through and just melt it either side onto the out onto the black part or the, the outer part of the ear so effectively that gives you a pivot point so your ears then will pivot will flip, flip out and in um, once you've kind of uh, assembled that what you do then is you push them into the dome so they um, let me just see if I can remove the ears dome. So on either side of the dome, there's a hole. There's there's kind of holes here where everything slots through. So the ears just slot in into the dome there. And put these a little bit of an angle, and that will slot in. And then once that's in, what you then do is just open the outer part of the ear, so it'll tilt up a little bit, and you can get a screw in there which attaches it to the main to the main dome. So once that's attached to the main dome, what you then go to do is get your servos in place here. Get a couple of screws in to hold the servos, and then once the servos are uh, screwed in place, you can use uh, some thin wire to connect them up. And the idea is then that each servo can flip the ears, so you can you can manually control the ears either with a switch on your RC or attach it to one of the channels. <coughs> um, and then on the main uh, dome we have two eyes I've put some little grooves around the eyes here um, so you can paint them yellow or we can remodel them a little bit so you can add lights if you wanted to add lights at a later date um, I'll show you the eyes a little bit more detail so the, and the eyes fit in with a single screw in the middle um, so that's your eyes, and then you've got this mouth, a little greeble, um, and then there's a couple of holes there for, I think they're five millimeter LEDs. So if you want to put well, the LED in the nose, the, the, the holes five point five millimeter, so if it fit a five mil, um, five mil LEDs, and then you've got space there if you wanted to add a PSI light, um, just through a piece of uh, opaque plastic um, and you can have a PSI, a PSI light so you can add a couple of lights a PSI light you've got door uh, ears that flap all of those drop through to the lazy susan through a slip ring and then can be powered and controlled from the main body um, and then effectively that's your body and as you drives so the features of it are is that it there's a servo there that will allow it to tip forward and backwards. Um, the easiest way of doing that, to be honest, is to do a, do a, a, add a mixing channel to uh, your controller and run that bottom servo on a um, on a, on on one of the dials on the uh, FSI six X controller. So what you effectively do is. Um, you run a mix for the forward and backward stick so when it goes forward it, a very low percentage you know 10 percent something like that what it'll do is just slightly move that servo one way or slightly move the tilt of the body servo other way which means you're not having to tilt the body manually when you move it around you can do you can run it off um, one of the pots but you can use one of the pots and the mix and then you can manually alter it when it stood still if you wanted to or what you can do is have it so that it works automatically when you push it forward and backwards and that's effectively the the tilt mechanism um, so it's got it's got the tilt features the little wings move with the tilt features you've got a dome that spins round obviously it'll spin 360 if you use a lazy susan a few lights on there space for a speaker so it en enables you to put in a, a little bit of a sound system if you want i will go through some of the electronics on on these but they're very very similar to uh <coughs> other sound systems that we've done for do and um the mouse droid and those kind of things but uh, i just wanted to kind of give you a bit of an overview on on how it assembles and how it's built <laughs>